Good morning. My name is Gary Adams and I'm a physics teacher here at Bees. So I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about, about myself, my background. I'm going to talk to you a lot about the course that we do here, the physics course, what it entails, what you go through and what it's like, basically. And we'll take some questions at the end. So I've been teaching physics for seven years, I think now. I've taught in a lot of different schools, I've taught in a lot of different environments, colleges and so on. And uh, I know my course pretty well now. Uh, I did a physics degree myself, um, that was at York. I did theoretical physics because I wanted to sound clever. So um, that's where I come from. And here we are in the physics room, which I have to say in all my experience is one of the best equipped I've been in. We've got all kinds of different equipment. We're ready to do a full course and we're ready to do all kinds of different things. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about course itself. I'm going to tell you what topics you'll actually learn in it. I'll talk to you a bit about where you can go from here when you've finished your physics course. What can it get you? What do physicists do in life? You know, where are these skills actually useful? Um, and just what do these particular skills get you in life as well? What, what can you, you know, what can you do with the skills you're going to learn actually in the A level and in particular in the first year? So I'm going to talk to you about what topics we do. And I'll bring some thing up on here. If you, I don't know if you can see it on this board, but it'll be helpful if you can. Can you see that all right? Just can. Right. OK, so we've got a few topics um, and I'll go through them and I'll tell you what they involve. So the things that I think make the biggest difference in doing an A-level compared with GCSE is that we'll start to focus a lot more on actually how do we make measurements how do we perform an experiment? How do we design an experiment? At GCSE, you're very much getting told how an experiment works. At A-level, it's going to be different. Sometimes you have to design the experiment yourself or go and do your own research to come up with the experiment. So we spend a lot of time talking about how do we measure things? And I've put out some of my basic measuring implements here. These are some of the things you'll learn to use in an A-level. Some of these are useful outside physics. Engineers use them, electricians use them. Um, and some of these devices, to be honest, are useful in all kinds of DIY projects, so it's worth knowing how to use them. Um, some of them are a lot more scientific, but anyway, we're going to learn how to use a lot of this equipment in way more detail than you've done before. Um, we usually start the year with a topic on particles, so this is all that fancy sounding stuff if you've heard of like quarks and leptons and if you haven't wondered what the Large Hadron Collider does in a way we go into a load of detail on that sort of thing. So we start with some of the stuff that sounds cleverest. It's not necessarily the hardest but it has a lot of strange words but it's an interesting topic and it really gets to the heart of what like physicists are doing in the world and you know we're obviously going to talk a lot more about not just physicists but engineers and the other careers we can go into. But I like to start with that topic because it's one of the most esoteric. It's something that I think is only very slightly touched on at the lower levels. So it's a nice way to start off. Um, we'll do a couple of topics you may recognize from stuff you've learned before. Waves and you know, mechanics and electricity. These are things you've heard of. But again, which is in particular the practical part of that, which I'll get onto in a minute. Um, and I want to give you a taste of what's in the second year because I think that's just an interesting thing to know where you can go on to. I've chosen to do an AQA course and the main reason why I choose that is because, I don't know if you can see these on the side here, we have five options and I think that's a really good thing. What it means is that when we're going into the second year, we'll discuss which optional module we're going to do. So there are five choices and we're going to pick one of them depending on what we find the most interesting. So you get a choice. You can do something about like the history of physics and science. You can do medical physics, which is a, there's a specific career in that. It's a useful thing to learn. Um, there's an astrophysics module if you're more interested in that space, hard science stuff. Um, or if you've got a plan and you want to go and become an engineer and lots of you are interested in that, we could do an engineering module too. So we get a whole section of the course which takes about half the term. And that's entirely elective. That's entirely up to what we decide to do that year. Um, and uh, we also go into some of the more advanced stuff like nuclear physics and uh, fields. If you've heard of magnetic and electric fields, that's some of the stuff we do in that second year. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the assessment. It's worth knowing. 
because it works differently to anything you've probably seen before. So we have two exams which are pretty straightforward in NAS. They work how you'd expect them to. They're just exams at the end of the year. But our practical assessment is done in a slightly new way. Now you might have read about it before, but we have six practicals that we do that are called required practicals. You have to attend those practicals. You have to physically do them. And the assessment on those is based on whether you've met a bunch of criteria like did you select the right equipment or did you record your results in a good way? It's only really assessed in terms of you did it well or you didn't do it so well or you didn't do it at all. There, there's no grading, there's no A, B, C. It's just did you do it? And at the end of the year, if we can provide enough evidence that you've achieved all those criteria, it's just a tick. It's just a yes, you've got your practical assessment. There's no grade for that. And it doesn't count towards your grade for the overall course either. It's a separate component. So at the end of the year, you might end up with a B in physics and a pass on the practical. And in fact, that's all that is. You can fail the practical section and still get an A grade overall. Um, that works the same in the second year. We just double the number of practicals. It goes up to 12. And those are specific ones. The way in which those skills will come in useful to you is that in the exams, there'll be questions about those exact experiments. And sometimes they're quite picky questions. They're, they're saying things like, how do you measure this, this particular thing? Or, or it'll say something about uh, someone did an experiment in a certain way and you're meant to criticize the way in which they did it based on your knowledge of how to do that experiment. So knowing how to do it is, is important. You have to be very precise about how you do it. So, that's how it works in both ways. You get the certificate. Um, I want to talk to you a bit about the destinations you can go to after doing physics. I mean, you can become a physicist, but there are lots of other things it's useful for. So just doing a physics degree and becoming a scientist is not probably one of the most major routes people with these qualifications take. Um, there are a lot of very practically useful things, particularly here in the Northeast. Uh, for example, there's a fair demand for nuclear physicists in the north of England. So that's that's a, an engineering, more engineering based sort of route, but you'd have to have that physics qualification. If you think about power stations like a Hartlepool, they need a lot of people with that safety skill and knowledge. Um, there's a lot of room for people who do something called geophysics, which is really important in uh, like mining or, or construction of large projects, that sort of engineering. But actually, if you look in closely at where physicists go after doing their education, they go to all kinds of places. Banking, there's a lot of demand for physicists in the financial sector. But something to do with the skills that we have in terms of uh, programming and mathematical modeling, and it applies really well to financial things. So if you want to be really well paid, that's one of the best ways to go with a physics qualification. Um, and there are various other sciences you can move into. I said before medical physicists. I know that uh, um, the James Cook Hospital, for instance, there's quite a few medical physicists working there and their job is to study um, the results of radiology, x-rays and CT scans and to manage those machines, that kind of thing. Um, and then just other courses like management and IT graduate schemes tend to look really highly on a physical qualification. So you tend to get a lot of people who've got a physics degree and also a physics A-level going in those directions. So um, there's loads of directions really, and it's up to you. I mean, if you've got a specific thing in mind and you're interested, why don't you ask at the end and I'll tell you if I think it's relevant or not. I'm sure I will because I'm a physicist and I always think that, but I try to be as honest as possible. Um, one thing I was asked to cover is about the equipment. There isn't really a lot of equipment you need to bring. I have most of it. Uh, I would suggest you get your, your own scientific calculator if you haven't got one. But besides that, there's really nothing in particular that you need. All the technical equipment is here. Um, some people ask me sometimes about books. In terms of doing the course, beyond the actual course textbook and maybe some workbooks, I don't recommend much else. Uh, there are loads of books I can tell you that are interesting to read and that are fascinating to do with science and physics, loads of them. But I'm not really convinced that that will actually make you any better at doing the course. I don't think you need to go and do loads of extra reading to get a good A-level. I think what you need to do is practice the skills that you learn, not really read around the topic. Although it is interesting to do that, so that's something you decide for yourself. Um, 
some of the things people ask me often just to start with is um, what I thought I'd just talk about a couple of those common questions. One is, uh, do I need to do maths? I've been asked that many, many times. You don't have to do maths to do physics. The A-level course has been designed so that you can get by without also doing maths. However, it will make your life a lot easier if you're also doing maths because there's a huge overlap between the two. And there's also a lot of uh, areas of physics where the maths that's built into our course is much more understandable if you've studied it in maths as well. Um, there are lots of ways where we can draw links between the two courses. And if you were to go on and do a degree in any area of physics, whether that's astrophysics, medical physics, whatever it was, you'd find that the mathematical requirements are very high anyway. So if that was your ambition, or, or engineering as well, that's the same. The mathematical requirements are so high that you, you may as well have done the A level. But if you're just generally interested in the ideas in physics, you can get by. You may want to be prepared to just do a bit of extra practice on the mathematical parts of the course because it is harder than a GCSE. The maths that's built into physics is a little more advanced. Um, a lot of people ask me who've just come out of a GCSE and had to do exams. I don't suppose you've had to do exams this year, so that's lucky. But a lot of people come out of that and say, do we have to memorize loads of equations? The answer is no. Memorizing equations is a bit silly. I don't know any physicists who can memor who's memorized all the equations. You get, a, you get them on a data sheet in the level exams, so that's not important. You need to remember what the letters mean. You need to be able to use the equations. You don't need to memorize the structure of them. Um, oh yeah, and uh, sometimes people ask me about whether it's whether there's danger because we have radioactivity is a big part of the course, a couple of practicals involved in that. Um, lasers, because you're starting to use lasers a lot more often. And um, hmm, it's a bit more dangerous than what you've done before, but nothing that'll kill you, not in the lab. I've never lost a student don't intend to, uh, it's not that dangerous. Um, and the radiation we deal with is pretty minor, so it's, it's, all, it's all pretty secure. Um, I've also been asked before about the practical, so people tell me, well, what if I'm doing badly in my practical assessment, how do I catch up? There is always space to catch up, so don't worry about that either. We actually have these six required practicals, but I can tack on a couple of extra ones if I need to give you time to catch up. In fact, I'm allowed to repeat them we can do them as many times as we want. So if you if you feel like you're not ready for a practical one day, you don't need to worry about that too much. You'll get time to catch up on it. Um, that's all the stuff that I think I need to tell you right now. So if you've got any questions for me, now would be a great time. Um, or if you've got any other comments you want to say, or just general questions, uh, that's where we're up to now. So thanks for listening. And uh, I hope we get to see some of you next year.